Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, TalkTony99. Thanks for the suggestion, Tony. You asked, how is industrial grease made? Now, grease might sound boring, just the goop that keeps machines from squeaking. But the truth is, this slippery stuff is basically the unsung hero of modern industry. So, what actually is industrial grease? How do you turn simple ingredients into something that can handle blazing heat, high pressure, and years of abuse without giving up? Let's slide right into the process of how industrial grease is made, right here on Explaining Everything. Before we cook up a batch of grease, we have to know what's in the recipe. Industrial grease isn't just thick oil. It's a carefully engineered mixture of three main ingredients. Oil, thickener, and additives. Think of it like a fancy salad dressing that just happens to prevent mechanical death. The oil is the main ingredient. It's the part that actually lubricates. It can be mineral oil, synthetic oil, or sometimes bio-based oil if you want your factory to smell faintly of virtue. Next comes the thickener, which acts like the flour in gravy. It's what turns liquid oil into that semi-solid paste we call grease. The most common thickeners are metal soaps, like lithium, calcium, or aluminum. Yes, soap. So technically, your car bearings are full of soap. Just not the kind you'd want to wash your hands with unless you enjoy losing fingerprints. Finally, we've got additives. These are the secret spices of the grease world. They might prevent corrosion, resist water, or survive intense heat. Some even make the grease cling better because you can't have your lube just running away mid-shift. That's just rude. So with our ingredients ready, let's head to the grease kitchen. Industrial grease is made using a process that sounds suspiciously like a cooking show. Only instead of an apron, you'll want safety goggles and a strong stomach for chemistry. The first step is melting and mixing. The manufacturer takes the thickener, say lithium hydroxide, and blends it with a fatty acid like stearic acid in a big heated kettle. When these two meet under heat, they react and form something called a metal soap. Once the soap is formed, they add base oil to the mix and start cooking. And when I say cooking, I mean it literally. Grease kettles are heated to somewhere between 180 degrees Celsius and 220 degrees Celsius. The goal is to disperse the soap evenly through the oil. After the reaction's complete, it's time to cool the mixture down while stirring continuously. This cooling process allows the soap fibers to grow and form a network, basically a microscopic sponge that traps the oil in place. The texture you end up with? Smooth, thick, buttery, and very, very slippery. Michelin-starred machinery chefs would approve. Then come the additives, the flavor boost, if you will. This is where manufacturers might throw in antioxidants, anti-wear agents, rust inhibitors, and extreme pressure additives. Each company has its own secret recipe, guarded like the formula to Coca-Cola or your grandma's spaghetti sauce. Once all that's done, the grease gets milled and homogenized, meaning it's passed through high-pressure rollers or homogenizers to make sure it's perfectly smooth. Now that the grease looks perfect, it's time to find out if it actually is. This is where it faces a brutal lineup of lab tests 
that would make even the toughest athlete cry. First up, the penetration test. A cone-shaped metal weight is dropped into the grease to measure how deep it sinks. This determines the grease's consistency, which ranges from hard as wax to soft as pudding. Yes, pudding. There's even an official grease consistency scale from 000 to 6, because humans love overclassifying goop. Next, they run a dropping point test, heating the grease until it literally melts and drips. The higher the temperature it withstands before melting, the tougher it is. Think of it as a don't melt under pressure test. Great advice for both grease and humans. There's also a mechanical stability test where the grease is churned and beaten for hours to simulate real use. If it separates, it fails. If it stays thick and uniform, it passes. And finally, the oxidation resistance test. Basically, they see how long it can last before breaking down. The best greases can last for years, handling brutal temperatures, crushing loads, and relentless friction without losing their cool. Literally. Only after passing all these trials does the grease earn its right to be packaged and sold. Once the grease has survived the testing gauntlet, it's ready for packaging. Depending on its final use, it might be loaded into tubes, drums, or giant industrial containers that look like something a villain would store toxic waste in. The filling process is fully automated. Machines squeeze the grease into containers without introducing air bubbles, because trapped air can ruin performance. And because nobody wants their multi-million dollar turbine to sound like it's burping. After sealing, the containers are labeled, coded for traceability, and stacked for shipping to factories, garages, and maintenance shops around the world. Every bit of that thick, shiny goop you see on gears or bearings started in one of those massive kettles, made with precision, chemistry, and a bit of slippery magic. So, there you have it. The not-so-glamorous but absolutely essential story of how industrial grease is made. The next time you see a machine quietly doing its job without squealing, smoking, or seizing up, you can thank the unsung hero in the shadows, Grease. The slick, stubborn, science-born goo that keeps our world turning without a single squeak. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of industrial grease, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and hit that bell button while you're at it. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.